Welcome back to the course on Network Monitoring with Security Onion. In this module, we will discuss more about the Security Onion console (SOC), which is a graphical user interface to monitor security alerts or events. This is the first window you may see when you install and log into Security Onion using a browser window and it displays some release notes. In the mid of 2018, Security Onion Solutions introduced the subsequent major version of Security Onion, named Hybrid Hunter. Security Onion 2.3, Release Candidate 3, was announced at the end of 2020 with remarkable new additional features and improvements and Hybrid Hunter was dropped. Hybrid Hunter is no more in the recent versions of Security Onion. Security Onion Console SOC, includes several analyst tools as shown in this slide. It includes various components like an alerts interface, hunt interface, PCAP interface, Kibana, Grafana, Playbook, Fleet, The Hive, CyberChef, and Attack Navigator. In this section, you will learn what Security Onion console is used. There is also a quick action bar that includes actions such as viewing alerts on alert interface, filtering the hunt query, pivot to PCAP, create an alert in the Hive, Google search for the value, analyze the value on virustotal.com and so on. After completing installation and logging into the SO account, you need to verify whether all components are up and running using the command sudo s o status. Security Onion also has a new SO analyst script that will optionally install a GNOME desktop environment, Chromium web browser, Network Miner, Wireshark, and many other analyst tools. Once you've run S, O, allow after installation in Module 1 exercise, you can then connect to Security Onion Console, SOC, with your web browser using an IP address or host name as shown in the next slide. It is recommended to use Chromium-based browsers or Chromium browsers such as Google Chrome. For better compatibility, Use Chromium-based browsers and other browsers may still work. Based on the selections you designated during the installation steps, connect to the IP address, 192.168.224.248 in our example, or hostname, www.example.com in our case, to access the login screen of Security Onion Console. As shown in this image, you need to log in using the email address and password that you use during installation. Once the login is successful, you can see the home page of SOC which has some release notes of the latest version. This slide presents the network data flow diagram for Security Onion Console. Once logged in, you could see several links on the left side for analyst tools like Alerts Interface, Hunt Interface, PCAP Interface, Kibana, CyberChef. Playbook, The Hive, and Attack Navigator. Alerts, Hunt and PCAP interfaces are native to SOC and you view the information on the same window. You can also access the analyst machine using SSH connection. Below the analyst tools, you can find the Elasticsearch, OS query and more. Security Onion Console provides you access to a wide variety of analyst tools listed here and all of them complement each other in its features. For example, we will look at a potential workflow. Alerts interface will provide you with a list of NIDS-HIDS alerts. Grafana can be used to make sure your system is healthy and running without any issues. The Hive may be used to review an escalated alert shown in alerts window at a later part of time. When you find an alert that you are interested in and want to investigate further, you need to increase your search and identify the additional logs related to the source and destination IP addresses. In this situation, you may need to pivot to Kibana or Hunt interface for additional information. If you find those additional logs interesting, you can still pivot to PCAP interface to analyze the full packet capture for that stream generated by stenographer. You can also download that PCAP file. You can open the Hive Analyst window and indicators of compromise EOX, found in the former step can be documented. Using Fleet option, you can perform a broader search for those documented EOX across all OS query endpoints. CyberChef can be used to perform cyber operations by analyzing, 
Decoding additional host artifacts. Playbook supports developing a play that will automatically alert on EOX moving forward. This update can be covered in Attack Navigator. Finally, you can return back to the Hive window and document the complete investigation and close the case. In this section, we are going to look into the new interface of Security Onion called Alerts. The first option available on the Security Onion console is the Alerts interface. This interface consists of the NIDS and HIDS alerts generated from Security Onion. This alerts interface helps you quickly drill down into alert details. You can pivot to PCAP or Hunt interface. If you find some alerts interesting or uncertain, it can be escalated and viewed using the Hive option available on SOAK. Once you have verified an alert and confirmed, it can be acknowledged. The count of alerts at a specified time zone can be found at the right top corner. You can filter alerts based on different fields such as name, source IP, source port and more. In this slide, we can see how an alerts interface looks like. You can look at all of the alerts displayed on the window and you're just going to start working down the list. You can triage them, i.e., Dig into them and figure out if it's something that needs to be escalated or if it can be acknowledged and dismissed. Looking through the interface, you will find a couple of toggles acknowledged and escalated. Once you have acknowledged or escalated, the specific alert will be removed from your view here. The right hand side top corner, you can see the total number of alerts found for the time period. Alerts searches for a 24 hours time frame based on the time zone is available at the right upper corner. On the left hand side we can find the queries. These queries define what the view down here looks like, grouping the alerts by rule.name and by module. On the right side of the alert, we have an event.module column which specifically would be Suricata, Strelka or Waza. You can group by source IP and rule names will go ahead and change our view. There are many different ways that you can start triaging and working through this list. One of the easier ways would just be coming over to the event.severity. We can focus specifically on any high severity alerts. You can left click on that high and a pop up shows a few different options. Left click on the magnifying glass with the plus sign is going to filter specifically for the high severity alerts. You can click on the bell icon which says acknowledging alert and removed from view. The new hunt interface is the next workflow option on Security Onion console. After logging into the Security Onion console, we can click the hunt link below the alerts interface and then select one of the many predefined queries listed in the dropdown. The hunt interface allows us to slice and dice our data asking questions and looking for those answers. Security Onion's hunt interface allows you to hunt through all of the data collected by sensors and stored in Elasticsearch. The interface is extremely adjusted for pivoting, stacking, data reduction and data expansion. The query bar drop-down box and time picker option are the first two elements exposed on this interface. On performing a query using the query bar available, Hunt will exhibit the number of events found in the upper right. It also reduces to three main sections of output. A toggle key option is available at the top of the page, where Auto Hunt is enabled by default. When this option is enabled, Hunt interface will automatically submit the query anytime you change groupings, filters, or date ranges. The Hunt interface allows us to more easily slice and dice our data from different perspectives. You can see only alerts in the alert interface whereas in hunt interface, you could see all the different data types we have. You can scroll down to the IP address and then you can group by event.module and event.dataset. You could notice seek events, Suricata alerts. You can pivot from the alerts interface over to hunt as you try to triage an alert and try to figure out if there's something going on. You can see a number of seek events. HTTP file a DNS connection log and so on. If you left click on that plus sign with the magnifying glass, it will filter only for that log. We have an option for a virus total and clicking on it is going to bring up the virus total website with the hash preloaded. We have plenty of information to escalate some alerts and create a case. 
you can click on the blue Escalate icon which is going to create a case in the Hive. Network Intrusion Detection System Alerts from Siricata, Host Intrusion Detection System Alerts from Waza, Protocol Metadata Log Information from Siricata or Zeek, Endpoint Log Information, and Firewall Logs are generated by Security Onion and can be viewed using Hunt Interface. You could find several entries in the drop-down list and every entry will express the actual query which is then followed by a short description of what that specific query does. This is one of the easiest ways for a security analyst to get started by clicking the query in the drop-down list box and selecting one of the predefined queries. These predefined queries involve major data types generated in a Security Onion deployment. You can filter based on event.dataset option to query a set of security events as illustrated in the figure on the slide. In Hunt Interface, the default time for Hunt search would be 24 hours. As a security analyst, you can search and look after different time frames such as days, minutes, etc. To do this, you need to change it at the right upper corner of the hunt interface window. The default time is relative or you can change it to absolute time by clicking the clock icon. In the visualization option of hunt interface, you can find various information such as most occurrences, fewest occurrences and a timeline. The bar charts displayed are clickable, which helps you to click a value to update as per your search conditions. A network trojan was detected is one of the most occurrences and is displayed in terms of number of occurrences. The accumulation of the security events defaults to 10 values, so most occurrences are displayed as top 10 and fewest occurrences are displayed as the bottom 10. The fetch limit setting helps define the number of aggregation values in the group metrics section. You can increase or decrease the number of aggregation values as per the expectation. The intermediate section of the hunt interface output is the group metrics segment. It's a data table which helps you to aggregate arbitrary fields. The group metrics table has a default fetch limit of 10 as shown in the slide. You can increase this fetch limit of table to 100 or others easily. Group B parameter are available to control these group metrics in the search bar. You can sort based on ascending or descending order by clicking the table headers. This table has different column values such as count, source.ip, destination.ip and so on. When you click any value on the group metrics table displayed, a menu of actions will pop up for that specific value. You can also find the plus and minus magnifying icons to the left. Using this you can include or exclude, respectively, those values in your search query. If you want to navigate further, Another magnifying glass icon is available to begin a new query for just the value itself. Other icons include the G and VT on the right end of the Actions menu, which helps you to look up the value at Google and Virus Total correspondingly. The ultimate section of output in Hunt Interface is a data table which comprises all search results. This table provides an option to drill into individual search results as required. You can sort the table headers, expand the search results, see a timestamp field and much more. Next, a few standard fields related to security events such as source.ip, source.port, destination.ip, destination.port, log.id.uid, and unique identifier for zclogs, network.communityid, community id and event.dataset. You can also find some additional data specific fields as well for your understanding. In SOAK, the default fetch limit setting for the events table is set to 100. You have an icon that helps you pivot to the PCAP file for the streaming information. The bell icon generates an alert for the event. Once you expand the search of a specific value or event displayed on the group metrics table, you can find several information. For a Zeek log, you can find information such as http.method, http.url, message, log.offset, log.id.uid, etc. Onion Query Language, OQL, 
is responsible for querying security events in Security Onion. It begins with a standard Lucene query syntax which provides the ability to create your own queries through APIs. You can add optional segments. The Group B segment is an important segment of OQL which tells Hunt to aggregate based on a particular field. For example, if you want a Group B a field called Destination IP Address which doesn't have a Group B statement, you can simply insert Group B Destination.IP to your search option. Multiple aggregations are possible by a Group B segment. For example, more fields that you want to group by can be added, separating those fields with spaces. To group by source IP address and then source port, you could use group B source .ip source port. The left bottom corner of the Hunt interface page displays statistics about the current query. It includes the speed of the backend data fetch and the total round-trip time for the successful query.